Hello. So let's see how material stacking and stickers work in Redshift. Here we have a bottle that has a floral background. It's this repeat texture. And you'll notice that it has a UV channel field that is empty. What it needs is this UV tag. Right now, the texture is applied with a UV mapping. If I change this to flat, we have a different projection, obviously. But if I, let's rename this guy, put this UVW tag into the UV channel. Now, if I go back and I use a flat projection, nothing changed. That's because this tag has anchored this texture on the object <clears throat> independently of the projection. Okay, let's bring in a sticker. This sticker is a RGB Photoshop file, which has two layers, an alpha and a background. Okay, so let's connect it to our surface. It's using the flat, we left it on the flat projection, which is not correct. We're gonna need a cylindrical projection. Good. Now let's put in the correct size. We're going to tie it three times by 2.5. For the offset, we're going to use minus 0.64 and here minus 0.93. And we don't need the tiling. Okay, when well, you don't use just the texture straight to an output, it has to go through a material. So let's bring in a material, connect it to the color, diffuse color, and very nice. So now we need to stack our two textures, the sticker and the background. For that, we'll need a material blender. Material Blender, it's layers. In Redshift way of thinking, as you go down in the layer, you're really going up the stack. So the base is on top. Our base is going to be our floral pattern, base color. Let's reconnect this to the output. And this is going to be our first layer. nothing's happening because we have to define a blend color. Our blend color, I'm going to copy paste this, our blend color is our alpha layer. And to extract the alpha, we'll use a color splitter. We connect the output to the input and the alpha to our blend color. Nice, but it's not using the alpha. The reason why is we have to tell Redshift that the alpha is the luminance. Very good. So now, what if we want to use another sticker, but this time we would have a flat projection. If we change this to a flat projection, our sticker becomes screwed up. So we have to anchor it like we did for the background. For this, it's simple. 
we select generate UVW coordinates and by doing so we go back to a UVW mapping projection now these two textures are going to be needing a UV channel let's rename it, rename it to sticker I'll put it on this one and I'll put it in this one now these two textures are anchored to this UVW tag no longer on the projection if I change it nothing happens so we set the flat projection for our next layer and let's bring a sticker so this sticker is a little bit different it does not have layers it's like a transparent PNG which means you have a color on the file and everything else was deleted so you have the alpha and the color on the same layer so we're going to need a material and a color splitter copy paste so now we do have a flat projection which we want to use okay so let's connect it to the surface okay let's fix the scale which is tiles really three and three offset minus point three eight minus point six eight we don't need the tiling okay let's connect our blender to the output surface and now this is going to be our layer 2 color and let's separate the alpha to our blend color very nice now what if we want to move our first sticker If I change our remap offset, what is happening is I'm moving the color, but I'm not moving the alpha because now we have two distinct textures here one for the color, one for the alpha. The way to do it is to use a tool called vector vector user data the vector user data has input fields that can be connected to other input fields so let's connect it to what we wanted to do is to offset so offset on this texture and the offset on that texture and now it disappeared of course because the vector user data fields are now the one driving both of those and it's zero 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 and they used to be minus 0.64 and minus 0.93 so let's use it here minus 0.64 and minus 0.93 it's back so now if we change these fields here they both you moving together very handy
one more thing. What if we make this bottle transparent? I have a transparent material here. I'm going to drag it into my shader graph. And that's a reference, as it says here, reference. So even though it's here, I can change it by changing my properties on this shader right there. So let's go back here. Our transparent material now is our base color. Very nice. But, hmm, I don't want this sticker to be repeated on the back. To change that, we're going to need another tool called a ray switch. The ray switch has a camera. Enable front and back. Let's tick this. We have color and back face color. So basically it's the front, what is visible at the front and what is visible in the back. So what do we want to see in the front? What we want to see in the front is this texture. So let's connect it to camera color. And this will take the place of our layer two. So here, it already knocked it out. But there's still the shape because it doesn't know what to put in the back. So what do we want to put in the back? In the back, we're going to have our transparent material. Camera color back. Very nice. Well, I think that's all that can be said about layer stacking and stickers in Redshift. If you know a better way to do this, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I wish you best of luck in your endeavors and see you around. Bye-bye.